between the Liberal Democrats and the Conservatives does go ahead, that would reflect the result in England, where the Conservatives won the most votes and seats. But in Wales, Labour were comfortably the largest party, while in Scotland, the Conservatives and Liberal Democrats together got barely a fifth of the available seats, the Tories winning just one. Lorna Gordon reports on how such a deal might be seen in Scotland. Dumfrieshire, Clydesdale and Tweeddale. It's a large rural constituency peppered with small market towns. The deals are still being done to decide who'll be Britain's next Prime Minister. But if it ends up being David Cameron, would he go down well with voters here in what is still Scotland's only Conservative seat at Westminster? No, it'll be fine. We'll be fine. <laughs> of all the seats that we've got, one seat, I mean... You shouldn't have any say in Scottish politics at all. I don't think it's a problem for the Scots, really, no. Or for David Cameron? Uh, no, no. I don't think the Tories have got any right to govern Scotland at, at, at any time unless they have a mandate here, and I don't, think they do. I don't think they have a mandate here. And that may be one of the Conservatives' main challenges if they do gain power at Westminster. The other parties here in Scotland, like the SNP, may question the Tories' right to make decisions affecting Scotland question their right to govern. The nationalists would instead have liked to have seen what they called a rainbow alliance involving their party, Labour and Plaid. We take our marching orders from Scotland. Scotland voted 85%, 85% against having a Tory government. Uh, that's clearly influential in our, our positioning in the Parliament, but we'll judge things in the interests of Scotland. Of course, a lot of decisions about Scotland are now made here at the Scottish Parliament, and the Tories say this makes a difference. Our mandate is, is across the whole of the United Kingdom. We've been very clear that we won't introduce any Scotland-only legislation uh, that doesn't command the support of others. And, of course, the big difference between the 1980s and 1990s is we have the Scottish Parliament, which was responsible for the devolved matters. David Cameron has said that on taking office he'll pursue what he calls a mutual respect agenda. This is uncharted territory for the Union, but the Conservatives on the verge of power insist they can govern the whole of the United Kingdom. Lorna Gordon, BBC News, Moffat. So what do people in the Tory heartlands of southern England think of a potential Conservative Liberal Democrat alliance? Mark Eason went to Henley on Thames in Oxfordshire to hear views from there. Middle England fears a political stitch-up might stitch up Middle England. There is a simmering anger behind Henley's stiff upper lip, chocolate box England with a bitter taste in its mouth. Viewed from here, the prospect of a Labour-dominated government reliant on Scots, Welsh and Northern Irish MPs to push through English cuts, perhaps, seems unfair. After all, in England, the Conservatives have a clear majority. I feel very angry about it all at the moment, but I have no idea what way it's going to go. I couldn't tell you. How, how, how would you feel about Scottish, Irish and Welsh MPs deciding on English matters? Oh, I hate that. I really hate We do have it now, don't we, to a certain extent. Yeah. Well, it could I be hate, the price for their I support. truly hate it. We're not going to be influenced perhaps by the Scottish and the Irish. And it gets to the stage where by how much choice do we as a voter or, you know, any political party have as an English person? If it goes ahead, I foresee a terrible time in which England will continue to suffer. If the Lib Lab Alliance were to go ahead, policies on English hospitals, police, transport and schools may be decided by the votes of Scottish, Welsh and Northern Irish politicians. What's more, the guarantee of political support may require cash for their parts of the UK, which could mean bigger cuts in England. Scotland is essentially Labour, England is essentially Conservative, and it just makes the whole thing rather difficult. As for the coalition that you're talking about, uh, I don't think it will happen. <laughs> it be too difficult to organise, I should imagine, so it won't happen. Whatever deal is done, the political mathematics have already stirred up those who argue England is getting a raw deal. They're livid, absolutely livid. They consider that the possible situation of a minority government of England is unendurable. If you only have to look at the blogger's sphere to know that it's absolutely seething with rage. The politics appear to have moved away from a rainbow alliance with vital Celtic hues, and that may in part be because Middle England threatened to colour up with indignation. Mark Easton, BBC News, Henley-on-Thames.
Well, that's all for now. If there are any developments, we'll bring them straight to you. But now it's back to Fiona in the studio. George, thanks very much. Well, the